So when Judas uh, decided on the sign he was going to use to show who the Son of God was, he decided the sign should be a kiss. So he walks up to Jesus in the middle of the night in Gethsemane and kisses him on the cheek to identify who he is to the soldiers. Um, can you think of a deeper act of hypocrisy? And Jesus' response to him is so incredible. Judas, he calls, friend, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? What an utter and total betrayal and what a severe act of hypocrisy. I don't know if you've ever been struck with the fact of your own hypocrisy before, but I assume you have. And maybe if you haven't had that dawning light yet, uh, you probably will. There's areas where everyone is a hypocrite. There's areas where we don't act in the same way with what we say, or we actually act in the exact opposite way. The book of Malachi is a slap in the face to a group of people who think they are quite righteous. They think they are good with God and that they certainly don't need much in the way of instruction from a prophet. Malachi shows up to destroy their delusions of who they are. You know, there's a version of you in your mind that only exists in your own mind, that nobody else perceives you in the way that you perceive yourself, and that that is just your own depiction. And that there are times where that illusion, that delusion is shattered. Malachi, if you will read this little book of the Bible, and if you will be real as you read through it, you can find some serious stuff that'll kick you in the teeth. Chapter one, verse one of Malachi says, the oracle of the word of the Lord to Israel through Malachi. I have loved you, says the Lord, but you say, how have you loved us? So their problem here, one of eight questions that is brought up, the first of eight questions is, look, how have, God says he loves me. How? His response is, was not Esau Jacob's brother, declares the Lord? Yet I have loved Jacob, but I have hated Esau. And I have made his mountains a desolation and appointed his inheritance for the jackals of the wilderness. Though Edom says, we have beaten down, but we will return and build up the ruins. Thus says the Lord of hosts, they may build, but I will tear down. And men will call them the wicked territory and the people toward whom the Lord is indignant forever. Your eyes will see this and will say, the Lord be magnified beyond the borders of Israel. God will be vindicated for his judgment. A son honors his father and a servant his master. Then if I am a father, where is my honor? If I'm a father to, if I'm your dad, then where's the honor that you rightly ought to show me as per the Ten Commandments, as every good Jew would know? He says, and if I'm a master, where is my respect? The Lord then in response to that, he said, as the Lord of hosts, he says to them, he enlightens them, he says, O priests who despise my name. But their response back to that would be, how have we despised your name? They feel good in their own presentation of righteousness. They believe they've done what they ought to, all that they need to, to fulfill the commands of God. So how? Really? You say you've loved us. That's the first question. The second question here is, how have we despised your name? You made the accusation. Prove it. Verse 7. You are presenting defiled food on my altar. But you say, how have we defiled you? And that you say, the table of the Lord is to be despised. It's not really something that I really need to bring my best Two, verse eight elaborates further. He says, but when you present the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? 
And when you present the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Why don't you offer that to your governor? Would he be pleased with you? Or would he receive you kindly, says the Lord of hosts? So they know the actual requirement. They're supposed to present a lamb. They're supposed to present a dove. They're supposed to present a, a drink offering or whatever it is. And what they're doing is they're bringing their trash. They're bringing the lamb that's blind. They're bringing the sick, the one that they would have had to kill off anyway. Uh, they're not making any sacrifice for God. They're not making any kind of sacrificial giving and offering before the Lord. They're not rep recognizing their relationship with God as it rightly should be. They're not seeing, hey, God has done everything for me. Even the breath in my lungs is his. Every dime that I own that I've ever counted was something that's on loan from him. They don't view life like that. Instead, they view God as someone who they've, they've got obligations to that they just, you know, it's a, it's a, a Christmas gift to somebody you don't really like but happens to be in your family. It's obligatory. You've got to give them a gift because that's what you've always done. You know, it's the fruitcake at wintertime, you know, at, at Christmas. You've got to present that to somebody. Obligation. And then they do the very least of what they think they can get away with. And they think they're righteous. They think they're fulfilling the law of God to love God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. They are living under the delusion that that's true when there's something obvious in front of them. They have a plank in their eye, a giant board hanging out of their eye, and they think they're totally good. They can see clearly. And God just gives them a, a very obvious place where they are hypocrites. The question becomes, for me, as I read through this on a devotional level, what do I do when my hypocrisy is exposed? That's the billion dollar question. What do I do when I see myself for, for who I really am? Do I double down on my defending of myself as the people of Israel do here as they continue to object to Malachi as he presents God's word? Or do I humble myself and submit? Do I humble myself and repent? Israel failed at this, but we know King David who failed miserably in his sin with Bathsheba when he was finally confronted very directly by the prophet Nathan. When he came in and, and rebuked David, David's response is very concise, but very powerful. I have sinned against the Lord. When my hypocrisy is exposed, what do I do? Do I try to cover it up? Do I try to find a way to make it not sound so bad? Or do I recognize the height from which I've fallen and recognize that I've, I've ran, if I'm in this situation like in Malachi, that I've, I've I love God, but he's not really high on the list. You know, he, he's not the priority. If that be the case, do I respond with repentance and faith? That's what I want. That's what I crave in my own life. As I see my own sin, that I would turn with tears in my eyes and rending of my own garments to run back to God and to say, forgive me not on the basis of my own deeds that I have done in some form of phony self-righteousness, but on the basis of the work of Jesus Christ on my behalf, may you forgive me and grant me a, a renewed spirit, a desire to be delighted in my salvation and my forgiveness, recognizing that he who is forgiven much loves much. That's where I want to be. That's where the servant of God who's after the heart of God needs to reside. I hope that as, as I present this, that you're convicted even of any sin that you've allowed into your life. And I, I, my prayer for anyone who would hear this would be that repentance would be the response, that you turn to God today. Thanks for joining me.